Hello everybody, Jesse here from Jason Inspired. Guys, you're very much welcome back to the FDRB console series. And today is pretty different because I'm going to be giving you a very quick overview based on my experience on how to approach this project. So I came to see that I could actually break down this project into three sections which I'll be sharing with you guys shortly. And this really becomes handy because it helps take away the ambiguity of the projects and helps you pay attention to the things that really, really matter. So if this sounds exciting to you, let's just, nah, hit the like button first and let's just get started. So the first section of this project is what I've captioned data creation. Now, basically everything centers around data, isn't it? You will need some way to create data in your application. So if you try to open a new account, that's data creation. If you try to add a new apartment for users to rent, that's data creation. So to achieve this, we'll be employing extensively the um, techniques of objects-oriented programming. So expect to see concepts like classes, objects, inheritance, access modifiers, attributes, and methods being used extensively over the course of this project. So having created data, we need some way to be able to store this data such that whenever we close our web application and relaunch it, we'll still be able to retrieve the previously created data. So we want to make sure that our data isn't lost. And this brings us to the second section of this project, which I've captioned data persistence. Now, data persistence in itself is simply the technical term for what we just explained earlier, in the sense that it is the ability of a computer program to save data in a way that it allows that data to be retrieved after the program has been closed. And if you're wondering how this all works together, I'm going to explain it right now, okay? So usually when you start out creating data, you create them as Python objects. And the goal is to be able to write these Python objects to some sort of storage so that you can achieve persistence. And in context of these projects, we're going to be writing our data to a file storage. So it means that we're going to be storing our data in a file. As beautiful as this sounds, writing Python objects directly to a file may pose a variety of issues. For example, compatibility issues. Now, those Python objects may not be compatible with some other programming language. And the implication is that the data inside that file may be very difficult to share or transfer with another application using a different programming language like JavaScript or C. And even if you go ahead to convert these Python objects to their dictionary representation and then you write it to a file, this doesn't take away the fundamental issues like compatibility as we talked about earlier, because other programming languages may still find these Python dictionaries incompatible to work with. So this begs the need for some sort of standard format that our Python objects can both be stored and transferred over a network. And in these projects, we're gonna be using the JSON format, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So it follows that to achieve data persistence, we will need to convert our Python objects to JSON. And just in case we need to use our data back in the application, we will need to convert the JSON format back to Python objects. So the process of converting Python objects to JSON is known as serialization. And the process of converting the JSON back to Python objects is known as deserialization. Now, concerning this, there's a lot I could say, but I'm just going to push it to a later video because of time. But finally, to achieve this whole process of serialization and deserialization, we'll be creating what is called a storage engine. And in this context, a file storage engine. And we're going to be touching these concepts in a later video, okay? But for now, let's head over to the last section of this project, which I've captioned the console. Hope you guys are enjoying it. So the console is basically a command line interface that is customized for this Airbnb project. It's basically like a shell with commands that are tailor made for manipulating data in your storage. So most of the commands um, used will be derived from the CMD class in Python. So we're going to be touching it in a later video, but you can also go ahead and read about it. So to cap it up, in deployment, you're actually going to be using a database storage, not a file storage. So one might ask, what's the whole purpose of creating a file storage in the first place? Well, you could think of the file storage as what a rough book is to a student. So the rough book gives you the flexibility of trying out stuff and even making mistakes before actually writing it down into your main answer booklet. So in this context, the main answer booklet would be the database storage. So working on the file storage, like I say, just helps you provide you with that flexibility of trying out stuff and finding out best practices before actually implementing it in the database storage, which will be used for production. So that's it for the Airbnb console overview. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So if you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Um, feel free to subscribe if you're new here for more videos like this. And that's it from me for now. I'll see you in the next one.